something very interesting about mass spectrometry is you can tell whether your compound has the presence of certain elements, in particular your halogens, chlorine and bromine. The reason is chlorine exists in two forms, chlorine 35, chlorine 37. There's only two of them, and they occur at the natural abundance of about 3 to 1. And for bromine, you have bromine 79, bromine 81, approximately 1 to 1 ratio. So you can think of it as, you know, we have two arms, right? Left arm and right arm. So we have uh, two biceps. Okay. And for chlorine, to me, how I see is right, uh, a person who keep on training one, one arm. So the chlorine 35 becomes your master hand. It is a bigger bicep, uneven bicep size. But for bromine, it is even, you know, both equally strong. And now let's take a look at the molecule that has the bromine inside here. For bromine, because you have a chance of having bromine 79 or 81, so when you cut a molecule up into fragments, you can have these two probabilities and it's one to one. So we always find twin peaks in a mass spectra for chlorine and bromine's presence. See here? This part could give me 1 to 2 for the case of bromine 79 or 1 to 4 for the case of bromine. 81 and there's equal chances because it's about 1 to 1 so we see twin peaks you know at 1 to 2 and 1 to 4 1 to 1 ratio now from here suppose you cut away the bromine what you see now is the remaining part the propyl cation that does not have any more bromine so this propyl cation stands alone and is worth 43 and that's why it's the base peak because both fragments there's different mz value will give rise to the same for the cation, so you see, we reunify it. We have a higher probability of getting the next fragment. Beautiful, isn't it? And of course, because you could also have a chance of having Br79 plus or Br81 plus, you will also see here. You can't see it's a bit small, but two peaks of relatively same height, one to one ratio, 79 and 81. That belongs to your Brahmin. Now, in the next start here, you see chlorine's case. Similar, again, you see twin peaks, but now it's going to be 3 is to 1. The peak that's a bit lower by unit of 2 will be higher, you know, 3 is to 1 ratio in terms of height. In this uh, propyl chloride, we do fragmentation. Okay, we have a chance of having chlorine 35 or chlorine 37. The mass must differ by 2 because of the difference in the mass of the two chlorine isotope. Now, you see here in this MZ value, the peak height, 3 is to 1. And when we cut away the methyl group and the remaining part still contain chlorine, what we see here is still a twin peak. 3 is to 1, 3 parts will be for the lower MZ value because they still contain chlorine and chlorine 35 has a 3 is to 1 probability against chlorine 37. So you see, it replicates as long as you have chlorine here. Then now, from here, we can undergo another kind of fragmentation where the chlorine becomes a radical and the propyl group, isopropyl, is the cation, which does have any more chlorine. So again, both parts give off the same isopropyl cation and you see that becomes a base peak, 43. There's no twin peak because now for this cation, there's no more chlorine. Now over here, let's give ourselves some time, you know, some practice using mass spec to identify compounds. We have sample A, sample B, and these are the two potential uh, identities of these samples. So, does it mean that, huh, here, they have the same chemical formula, same molecular weight, same mass, but they differ in the structural formula, different connectivity between the atoms, their different arrangement. So, is this sample A, compound A? Tool! This is sample B. And that sample A doesn't mean that we place it here, it must be side by side. Okay? Now, how do we tell? Now, they have the same molecular weight. That's why their molecular ion peak is the same as each other at 98. You can't tell much. But we see that the base peak is 83 for one of them and 69. And I always remind you to see the difference between the 
molecular ion peak and the base peak. Here we have a difference of of 29, right? 98 minus 69 is 29. And the other case for sample B, 98 minus 83 is 15. 15. Metal group. I want to cut away a metal group. Here, where can I cut metal group? Oh, I could do it here. People say, yeah, I could do it here as well. So both are fine. Okay. Then we look at the other mass spectra. Difference of 29. 29. 29 is for your CH3, CH2 group, ethyl group. I need to cut off chop ethyl group and the only place we can do it is right here cut it once da -da. we can't cut at any bond just one time we can't cut one bond and we get a loss of 29 no way if we cut it here we get two fragments 15 and the other part of it uh, 6 83 if we cut here suppose we cut here the whole part remains one fragment. We still have 98. If we cut here, 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 or anywhere else along the ring, we still have the MZ value of 98. So don't be fooled by it. You have to cut one time, just one covalent bond, you know, and see which part it fragments to the cation and the radical. Now, there's one more thing to remind you is sometimes you see. 98. Oh, 98. That means the total molecular formula for their molecule are no molecules 98. But that's assuming that the charge is 1. Remember, this is mz value, mass over charge. I could have uh, 196 divided by 2. That gives me 98. Right. What you have? What if you have a molecule that's worth 196 in terms of mass, but it's a 2 plus charge? What appears in the mass spect in the mass spectra is still ninety eight. So be careful about this, okay? And for the last slide, we see here this complex molecule, which is alcohol, has a molecular weight of one hundred and two. Now we see here the base peak is fifty nine. We can also have another great abundance peak of seventy three. Who are they? So always go back to the difference between the molecular weight, mass, one hundred and two, and fifty nine. The difference is forty three. Forty three. Rings the bell. 43 is your propyl group, loss of C3H7. And the remaining part becomes a cation. So we cut here, and the plus charge will be there. And we know it's good, because that's the alpha cleavage. We have the stabilization of the adjacent lone pair coming from the oxygen. Or we can cut over the other side, and we are losing an ethyl group, minus 29. And indeed, we have it, 102 subtract 29, that's 73. Beautiful, isn't it? It makes sense. Our logic, what we learn, tallies. So thank you very much, have a nice day, and see you.